Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Also, the audio of this video is available on iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn. I've left links to each service here in the comment section to this video, or at least right beneath the video uh, where it has the video information. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now many of you in commenting on the post-fight video for Janady Golovkin's recent win asked me what Golovkin could do that would impress me. What could he do that would show me that he knows the game of boxing a bit better than, right, being a patient stalker, coming in flat-footed, throwing big-time hooks, right? Golovkin does a little bit more than that, but as I said before, there are questions, right? We don't know how Golovkin would handle a guy able to get inside and clinch him. We haven't seen Golovkin on his back foot. You know, when Golovkin is destroying Matthew Macklin early, Daniel Gill early, right? When he's never gone to the 11th round or the 12th round, right? I don't blame him. He's just being a successful boxer. But it raises questions on what happens if Golovkin does get hurt, if he does find himself buzzed or in need of changing the tempo of a fight. It does open up questions when a guy's never gone 12 rounds on whether he would still be functional late in a fight against a world-class 160 pounder. Right? That Kasim Uma bout, Uma really wasn't a seasoned middleweight. Right? Understand in that fight, Golovkin got hit with several flush shots early. So let's get back to the question. What could Janady Golovkin have done to make me more bullish on him? And keep in mind, I'm a guy here online who has praised Golovkin in the past. Right? My point is simply, if we're talking about elite fighters, not contenders, but champs, not very good, but pound for pound. Then the standard is raised. Well, let me talk about a fighter that not a lot of people know about, who impresses me a great deal. Right? This guy, like me, has a problem pushing himself away from the buffet table. He has had a problem in the past with weight. In fact, he famously blew the Olympics by failing to make weight, right? This is at a time where he was an amateur champion. But this guy, to me, has the package. I'm not saying he's perfect. I'm not saying he's the world's greatest athlete. I'm not even saying he's the most dedicated man to the sport of boxing. Right? Any guy blowing an opportunity to fight in the Olympics because he can't back away from the buffet table or he can't run that extra lap isn't making the same sacrifice that others have made in the past. But what I am saying is we need to separate out elite talent from elite effort. There's some guys out there who are just blessed with the way they see the sport the way they've learned the sport. They're just blessed in intuitively knowing angles. They're just blessed in intuitively knowing how to react to situations. I want people to focus on British Commonwealth welterweight champion Frankie Gavin. Now, I've been talking about Frankie for a while. Frankie has been moving slowly in his career. He's in his late 20s now. He's not as young as you think. Right? Frankie, true to form, 
after having weight problems as an amateur has had weight problems as a professional but let me say this Frankie Gavin has a vertical gain right it's different than let's say fighters like Lee Purdy who his opponent who is the unbeaten European Boxing Union champion Leonard Bundu beat up right so much so that Lee Purdy's boxing career sadly is in jeopardy Purdy suffered a detached retina in that fight Purdy got stopped in the 12th round right well let me just say I'm taking Gavin over Leonard Bundu and I think Bundu has the faster hands right but what Bundu doesn't have right and keep in mind Bundu throws punches in bunches but what Bundu doesn't have is Gavin's vertical game his innate knowledge of spacing his ability to literally come in and be right in front of you as he's countering you and to have the timing down to such an extent hold on I have to wave my stepdaughter away come on Lou another time huh hey get out of here that's what oh, kids well let me just say this getting back on subject and you thought my cat was bad anyway getting back on subject here the fighter who comes to mind when I look at Frankie Gavin and I'll admit this fighter was physically a much better athlete than Frankie Gavin is Pernell Whitaker when I talk about a vertical game and a sense of timing and distance and cadence right the ability to hit the other guy when the other guy just isn't prepared to hit you back the fighter who really encapsulated all of that was Pernell Whitaker now what Frankie Gavin does and he's a southpaw is he's off at the side right he's off at the side he's very hard to hit understand if you are a righty who likes to throw a high right hand right you're gonna have a very hard time hitting a southpaw who knows what he's doing right if you're Oscar De La Hoya and you throw a great left hand right what I want people to do is to look at that De La Hoya Pernell Whitaker tape you're gonna notice that Pernell Whitaker is ducking under the left hand right what I call a vertical game is a guy who can be in front of you he's not running and as you throw punches he has it timed he's always bent at the waist he has it timed where he can duck under your punches and then he has a sense of timing that I'm not sure can be taught I believe a guy has to have it when he first enters the gym he has a sense of timing where he can then step in and hit you with counters while your hands are extended in other words the guys in front of you and he's ducking under your punches he's rolling with the high punches then he's able to step in and hit you and get back out without being caught right think about it right well that's Frankie Gavin in a nutshell right Gavin doesn't look like he's the best athlete he's not the fastest afoot right he doesn't have a lot of lateral movement but let's just say he knows how to box right he belongs to the school of fighting that let's say James Tony belongs to right there's never a time in James Tony's career where you ever thought Tony was a great athlete 
right? He's not Roy Jones, right? But yet, Tony in the trenches could bob, could weave, could counter, could do things where the other guy really at times was rendered helpless. If you ever want to see a great deconstruction of an excellent Hall of Fame fighter, look at Tony against Evander Holyfield. Now my point to you is this. Frankie Gavin, for all of his problems, knows how to box. Right? This is a guy who, quite frankly, is probably bored by the sport at times. He's not Lee Purdy. He doesn't stand upright and come right in front of you. Now, this is one of the premier angles players in the sport. He comes over at a side angle, right? He's bent over. He likes to lean on his front foot, but yet he's not front foot heavy. Now, let me say this. This fight's fascinating because Bundu fights out of a southpaw stance. So theoretically, it's southpaw against southpaw. But I'm going to go wherever my eyes take me. And if you look at Bundu carefully, you're going to notice that Bundu switches to orthodox a bit too much. In fact, if you look at the Lee Purdy fight, if you look at the 12th round, if you look at the right hand that Bundu throws, it's the punch before the punch that ends the fight, right? It's the next to last right hand Bundu throws before Purdy hits the canvas. I would argue that only a right-handed fighter could throw that right hand. In other words, Bundu just comes in and throws it. It's like an overhand right hand. I don't believe a lefty, a real lefty, not a guy fighting out a lefty, but a real lefty would throw that punch that way. I believe what's going to happen in Frankie Gavin against Leonard Bundu is I think Gavin is going to force Bundu to fight right-handed. I think Gavin is going to force Bundu to fight at his pace, right? When you're fighting a great defensive fighter, the oxygen is sucked out the room. High volume guys become low volume guys, right? You saw the Babu Chuminoff Bernard Hopkins fight, right? What a great defensive fighter like a Hopkins will impose on a Babu Chubinoff is a slower pace. Now Bundu threw a lot of punches against Lee Purdy. He looked like the Energizer Bunny, right? Even though Bundu's 39 years old, he's in better shape than Frankie Gavin, right? Bundu has been in the ring and had grueling fights. He's in great shape. He's the one moving around at the end of the Lee Purdy fight, not Lee Purdy. Right? But what I believe is going to happen is I believe Bundu is going to be so frustrated at trying to find Frankie Gavin, who's going to be right in front of him. And I believe Bundu is going to be so tired at getting countered by Frankie Gavin that I believe Gundu's pace is going to be cut by at least 40%. So let me say this, and I don't say it lightly. Right? I believe that there are guys getting a lot of glory in boxing. Right? Welterweight is notorious. Right? Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather. Right? I'm not saying those guys aren't great fighters. Right? Especially Mayweather. Right? I think Mayweather really is an all-time great. I'm not saying those guys aren't great fighters. But understand, Frankie Gavin would give both guys a very hard fight. Right, Frankie Gavin, in my opinion, against Keith Thurman or against Sean Porter or against Kell Brook 
Those are all competitive fights. Right? I like Frankie Gavin here. He's a name you need to know. Don't think of him as a regional champion. Think of him as an international threat. Right? As long as this guy is able to make weight, and I'll agree, even I'll be running for the exits if he fails to make weight. If he shows up at the weigh-in and blows the weigh-in, okay. You know, I've, I've gone down that road with Johan Guzman in the past. I'll be hitting the exits. Okay, but if he makes weight and if he doesn't look drained, in other words, if he doesn't look like Canelo at his recent weigh-ins, right, if he looks like he's actually trained and he doesn't, you know, look like he's going to leave the scale and run for a water bottle, you know, those guys, right, if, if he looks ready and there are no injuries, you're not hearing about back injuries, now that's paramount with Gavin because Gavin bends at the waist so well right any back tightness if he has back tightness like Shane Mosley my advice is to stay away but if he's in shape if he looks in shape at the weigh-in right if he's good to go I like Frankie Gavin in this fight and dare I say he's the kind of fighter who would give anybody at 147 and 154 in my opinion a hard time let me say quite frankly I hope Gavin thinks about his life a bit he's unbeaten both of these guys are unbeaten but I hope Gavin thinks about his life a little bit and decides to fight at 154 right if you look at his resume you're gonna see that he recently fought a fight above 147 pounds right a guy should go all out during a fight he shouldn't kill himself to make weight before the match let me just briefly talk about Leonard Bundu right Bundu closes the show against Lee Purdy with two right hands understand he fights out of a left-handed stance he's 39 years old he has been the EBU champion for some time he was a decorated amateur fighting out of Italy right now he fought in some huge fights he had a two fight series with Daniel Perucci right the first fight was declared a draw I thought Bundu won that first fight the second fight Bundu left no doubt in fact if you look at Bundu's record you're gonna see another uh, match a uh, series of matches with the same thing First fight's close, second fight, Bundu pulled away a bit, right? Bundu is a technician. That's why this fight's really interesting. It's two technicians, right? Bundu stood in front of heavy-handed Lee Purdy, was right in front of him for several rounds, like the first six or seven rounds. And Bundu in front of a puncher was outworking him. He has outsized hand speed. He's the kind of guy who, when he flashes the hand speed, it's a bit surprising. Right? Now, that um, Purdy fight showed a problem with Bundu. Bundu got hit with a lot of body shots in that fight, to the point where Bundu started getting on his horse in the later rounds. Frankie Gavin is an excellent body puncher. I think Frankie Gavin looked at that tape and knows that the way to slow down Leonard Bundu is with body shots. Let me also say this too. I know Bundu's had a string of KOs, but Bundu's KO percentage is 40% or less. He's not a big puncher. He's the kind of guy who wins wars of attrition. Understand that Gavin, believe it or not, has at least as many knockouts in fewer fights than Leonard Bundu. Right? Gavin, when he wants, can sit down on punches. Right? But understand, Gavin is the kind of guy who, if he's methodically outboxing you, then like Roy Jones, he won't step on the gas to close the show early. 
right? So the things to look for early in this fight is going to be the pacing. Is it a slower pace, which would favor the slower-handed Gavin? Or is it a fast, frenetic pace, which would favor the faster-handed Leonard Bundu? Right? Also, look at Bundu's straight right hand. My point to you, you know they say, the way to beat a southpaw is with straight right hands. Right? Look at Bundu's stance. Is he fighting out of a southpaw stance? Or is he fighting out of a right-handed stance? Right? Because what's interesting with Bundu is, he prefers to throw a straight right hand. Right, but you can't do that out of a southpaw stance. Right, I don't believe Bundu's right hook is that great. Right, he doesn't throw it like, let's say, Mayweather throws his lead left hook. So take a look at the stances. Gavin is a real southpaw. He's going to be in a southpaw stance. Take a look at Bundu. As you watch the fight, if Bundu is forced into a orthodox stance, and if Bundu tries to throw that right hand, a straight right hand, right, watch for that punch and see if it lands. If he can't land that punch, which I consider to be his best punch, he's going to be in trouble. Understand, this fight is in the United Kingdom, right? So to sum up, I like Frankie Gavin. I'm expecting Bundu to have the faster hands and to be in the better shape. But understand, Gavin, who isn't perfect by any means, is like James Tony, right? Like Pernell Whitaker, he's just a born fighter. He just understands the sport. He's not going to be up close on Bundu like Lee Purdy is. Rather, because he bends at the waist and leans on his front foot and because he's an excellent counter puncher to kind of discourage a guy from bum rushing him he's gonna have a little bit of distance between himself and Bundu pay attention to that distance Gavin will want a little bit of distance Bundu won't Right? Bundu's best bet is to fight this fight like he fought the first half of the Purdy fight. Right? Get up on the guy who relies on timing and smother him. Get him out of his comfort zone. I don't think he'll be able to do that long term. Maybe he'll be able to look good early. Gavin did go down in a recent fight early. First time in his career. Maybe Bundu will be able to look good early. But what typically happens when you're fighting this caliber of fighter, a guy who can put his head below your shoulder blades on occasion and then duck under punches? By the way, you'll know Frankie has the whole thing timed. If when Bundu starts to throw punches, Gavin effortlessly is ducking under the punch to the point where the punch doesn't even graze him. You'll know that he's figured out the pattern, right? This type of fighter, in my opinion, if he makes it to the fourth round and figures out your punch pattern, in other words, if Gavin's not reeling around the ring, if he's conscious in the fourth round and you see him making Bundu miss the fights over right Gavin should be able to replicate that round after round after round but understand this is a battle of unbeatens Gavin's gonna have to get through the first two and a half rounds right Bundu has the hand speed advantage Bundu is very experienced Bundu right now, I believe, has at least a three-fight knockout streak going. I like Gavin in this one. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me say this, too. Don't be fooled by the bright lights and the hype. 
go by the talent, right? Just like I believe the Gale beats Carl Frotch, I believe Frankie Gavin beats Leonard Bundu, right? Look at the game, not the fame. You have some very well-known famous fighters out there. Canelo comes to mind, who quite frankly would get tested by some of the contenders in their own division, right? Just consider Frankie Gavin to be Exhibit A. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.